Hello and welcome to Candle Yellow and today our theme is Social Skills Letter G. Now one of the most important things to learn about life skills is how you talk to people, how you face people in real life and when you do that, that's what a social skill is all about. Also, we've seen a lot of students and a lot of children actually they are shy or they are not out front. Perhaps one reason could be that they are very poor in the studies. So that is why a special section in yellow has been given on study technique. And hopefully by this time the students and the teachers together will form their own techniques and that's a desire that they become more confident as they proceed. So G1, G2, G3, all three talk about a very new skill, a very relevant education technique called the Pomodoro technique. Well, Pomodoro looks like a pomegranate and it also is a simple combination of a tomato and an apple more like a pomegranate and the whole idea is it's it is a ticker of course we don't need to buy the specific uh, equipment or this device but the idea is the best way to have lot of focus is to break it down into breaks you know look at anything a great sport for that matter cricket has intervals where there is a drinks break you know hockey especially is great because there's a segment of 15 minutes and there's a break in between the same way a pomodoro technique is where you set an alarm perhaps a mobile phone for example you do a stretch of time for 40 minutes you study and then you take a 10 minute off so I, I, I remember watching this movie called The Social Network and in The Social Network is a very clearly mentioned that when the new students or new boys will come in, they will be completely isolated and they have to do a coding for let's say an extended hours of time and then they can party but until they finish the coding they are not allowed to take a break. So my G2 when you explain this is what are the things that you can think of in a 10 minute break. I remember going and refreshing myself with a cartoon so when i was studying i would watch tom and jerry which is, looks very old and ancient in today's time but that was how i was doing i have a friend in great corporate he's a he's a software engineer he says in my break i play some mobile app game you know it could be a candy crush all that i know but the idea is you distract yourself so the first thing we are asking you is ask your students what would they have done in that 10 minutes break and G2 is, did they think of any of these things? And it's interesting, did you read a magazine? Oh, reading, again, did you eat something? Maybe grab a bite of a sandwich or something nice and healthy, perhaps like an, a fruit. Apples are as, uh, you know, uh, uh, refreshing or gives you as much kick as a coffee would. Did you play a game? Did you listen to music? Did you take a short nap? A shower maybe? So something or other that can distract you and that's what Pomodoro technique is all about. G3 says that how would you divide your time? So example, if I have two hours with me or, or so how would I divide two hours? So the idea is that amount of time you take break and the amount of time you work. So the red one, 25 minutes slots are the work time. So I've got four slots of 25, which is equal to close to two hours minus 20. So that is 20 minutes. So 100 minutes I'm studying. In between the 100 minutes, I have five, five minutes break and then I have a 15 minutes break. It, this is not a rule of the thumb that you have to do this, but this really works as a Pomodoro technique. While we are talking about it and my side techniques or side lessons would be because this might get over a little soon, is what we are trying to teach is how do you manage your time. Unfortunately, and remember I am telling you something very important, please draw this and teach your class what you are talking about. In the name of time management, most of us do is clock management. We are not managing a time, we are just managing a schedule and that's called clock management. If you have to do time management, you have to understand the perception of what a good time is. So here is a great technique. Ask your students to close their eyes and tell them they are not allowed to count mentally. Don't do one, two, three, one sheep, two, three, don't do. They can do anything else they want to, but for one minute, 60 seconds, they can't open their eyes. And then when they open their eyes, they can't make any noise. The first person opens the mice, raises his hand. And you will actually keep counting how many times, who, who opened the eyes first. And, and as they open the eyes, you can keep making a note of their 
time they open it and believe me it is strange 60 seconds looks so long people will open their eyes at 20 30 45 and some will not open until one and a half and two minutes so we've got our time management completely wrong upside down it's a great fun game you can play you can play twice one when you do it first hand as soon as you enter a class and one you can do at the end of the week or when you teach this entire pomodoro they will have a better grasp of time Another great thing you can do on a side note is the mayo jar. Well, this is the Stephen Covey's uh, very popular experiment where you bring a jar and then you ask the participants to fill it with rocks, small stones and sand. And what do they fill with? And you know, it's a great way of showing that most of us would actually fill in the sand first. And the moment the sand is filled up completely, there is no place for the rocks and the small pebbles. What does it show? It shows that if you fill your life with small meaningless activities, you will have no time to do something big. And if you want to just play, you must watch the little YouTube video on this. Just call it the Mayo Jar or the Stephen Covey's Time Management Jar Technique. It's a great exercise, a great game and you will really enjoy with the children and that's something perception they will do. Uh, there's so many I can do on time management. Let me give you one last one. It's, it's interesting called spend it or lose it. So tell your students to have a pen and a paper ready and tell them I am giving you 86,000, 8, 86, 4,000, so 8, 6, 4,000, 8,64,000 rupees, dollars to spend and they can choose whatever they have to do with the time. But the catch is if you don't use that money for anything, the money is wasted. So I, I buy a, a car for so much money, fair enough. Then I buy this, you can't exceed it, you can't divide. So I can't buy a Mercedes because that will not come in 8 lakhs. But I may go and buy a smaller car. But what you don't is wasted. And then you can tell you have to minimum buy 5 things. So now the car is out. You might buy a mobile, you might buy something else. But you can't buy something which is just one thing. The idea is at the end of it, you explain that 8,64,000 or 8,604,000 ,000 is actually the number of seconds in a day. Right? So, this is the number of seconds and did I get it wrong? All the calculation, 86,400, right? Just do a calculation in math, right? Whatever you use is yours. Whatever you waste is wasted and that's what time is all about. So, on that very complicated number I messed up with is a G1 to G3. Now G4 and G5 is another study technique which is ex really interesting what I call the rap song. Now you know sometimes rhythm is a great way, a great innovative creative way to learn things. For example, there have been students making rap songs and US presidents may not be relevant if you are in a different part of the world but let me try. You know, so how many presidents there are total? 45 until Donald Trump. So 45 presidents, White House residents from the evolution to the revolution to the age of internet. George Washington took the first save until Abraham Lincoln freed the slave. Bush and Clinton and Bush again. Obama in the White House to regain. Now it's Trump to gain. Fair enough, you know, I just, uh, something that you make up, it's not true. Uh, these are not only the presidents in the order, but I just gave you five or six presidents which are common one. But you can also do something like that for what is very relevant in this particular age group called the Mendeleev's periodic table. I'm fascinated with the periodic table. I enjoy it. But it, the, the idea is you put anything in rhythm, how the stab songs or the Britannia, you know, ad jingles are so popular. Your songs will make you remember things. This is a, what I call a memory peg. A memory peg means you just peg something up and you remember it much better. So the periodic table you can talk about Healy, Naka, so you know, hydrogen, lithium, sodium, Na, sodium, case, potassium. I made some up for you, but you can ask your students to make some raps along with it. Who knows, you will enjoy the periodic table, you learn something. You can go to Sky Education TV on YouTube and there's some nice examples of periodic table. Each element has been given in detail. It's for a small child where chemistry is not introduced, but still I find children enjoy it. So the idea of a social uh, study circle uh, skill is you use a lot of music or rhythm to learn a lot of things fair enough so perhaps you can now give let me give you some more memory pegs some more memory pegs. how do you remember a date for example one of the most important date for Indian subcontinent is the the independence date now whatever I do I can put it in perception in 1947 
1947 is easy 19 and 47 break it down but 1857 now you say see the first battle of independence was exactly 90 years back 1857 1947 mentally it's easy for you all the dates can fall in that perspective people hate history because a lot of dates if you make a story around it it's not difficult let's say they like sports so what you do is you just remember okay there's a cricketer who scored 19 runs then another one who scored 14 and you break this down and it becomes easy for you to combine things that's one example in numbers another example is you do with places right so if you have to think of an answer for example i was teaching some of deciduous and coniferous forest so you just cd all right so i remember cc is cone all the pine tree and the you know xmas tree is all about cone so that has to be cone coniferous now now for, from cone i can go to d we said deciduous deciduous is gulmohar neem you know banyan tree people tree and then it's suddenly it's a memory pack you remember one the other is almost like a paired activity you remember easy what about the camels the camel with one hump and two hump all right so if you write a uh, d it has one hump so it has to be d the dromedarian camel if you write a b b has two humps so it is a bacterian camel so you can use a lot of these techniques and once you equate them with the technique it's easy for our children to put a memory peg in of course in sky education we love to do a study technique memory game and hopefully one day we can do a workshop with you with your students in your center or you can watch our workshops on youtube and perhaps replicate it the last activity in study technique is a very interesting one something that will really amaze the kids something that is so relevant even in today g6 is all about a small blob of ink what i'm talking about blob of ink it's called the rothschild Ross charge in blot. This is a psychological test. It's a Swedish or a Scottish scientist who actually said that just based on your mental balance or imbalance, you will see different things in just a blot of ink. Now, the in G6, you have got four simple diagrams, and the students have to think of what they mean. First of all, as a creative study, you can say what first comes to your mind most likely in most of these images they would either say a butterfly or a bat or a moth which is most common but the th they can also say a frog which shows higher intense creativity now i'm not a psychologist and i'm not trying to decode a child's mental strength but one caveat one rule of thumb if they say anything like that which is good if they say a dead skin which is also something that people have said now you have to think why is the child thinking of darker themes anything that comes with darker themes otherwise they would not say mean the sign of e coping with emotion and you have or coping with stress and these are two critical life skills you have to address so you know the beauty of it is you can tell them the next uh, activity in the same g6 think of no insects so you can't think of a spider or a bat of butterfly or a moth or or, a, or any animal which is like a frog or a bat now what comes to your mind people have said that this looks like two people talking to one another they said it looks like uh, the pirates uh, flag and uh, different perceptions can come in you can push them you can make them into tps think pair and share and then they can come with answers will be very interesting to find out now of course i strongly recommend using the book making it dirty of course you have to make sure that these books are not passed on to uh, the, the siblings or friends because it will be very unfair it is their book so please do an ink bot test uh, i don't know if this is the best way to do it but what you have to do is you'll drop a small ink and they have to fold the paper and whatever shapes come out is the shape that they decide what is the ink blot looking like now ink blot is, is is a very very popular test united states have used it extensively uk says this is not a scientific test japan for that matter there is a cult on the ross charge ink blot test so you know this is this is such a popular thing in japan even today there are groups which actually decode these tests so it depends on where you are it's an interesting study to f make out finally there is an extra g8 given which is a part of the ross charge ink ball which is what have they done in summer vacations you've studied so much so i thought i'll make an interesting one a special thing summer vacations so you know there's a set of questions you have to answer uh, what do you usually plan your vacations where do you go and every child can do a small survey of others on what have they done and that is when they do a data 
what are the months you go which do which place do you go do you fly down do you take a car do you travel is it in india is it a different country you know uh, would you like to change some countries if you're a cousin in some other hemisphere what would they be and very interesting about the northern and southern hemisphere you see our winters are summers in australia so every year 25th december which is always associated with santa claus reindeers in winter is summer in australia interesting isn't it so you can think a lot more on a special gift to the kids after all the study technique all work and no play makes jack a dull boy good luck and all the best hello and welcome to candle yellow and today we are on the letter h core living value and one of the core living value we're going to teach is optimism so in h1 till h3 we are talking about something that is always in our lives especially in today's time the advertisements these ads promise you a lot of things and that's what optimism is about you will not see an ad which is pessimist but perhaps there are ads which show the darker side for example the ads on global warming or environmental protection but yet they have a hope they ask you something so the two great features of an ads are ads highlight something and then call to action so you will not see an ad which says oh this is great either they will want you to buy it or refer it or visit it so that's what great ads are about ads that highlight a specific thing a product or a service or a cause and number 2 an ad which calls to action so when you are teaching this please write these two things on your board what are the two great insights on an ad now as you do it ask your students what are two memorable ad that comes to the mind most likely it would be the flavor of the season so if it's a sports season going on if they've just seen a mcdonald ad stare some perennial ads you know like a pepsi cola ad is always on your face maybe the the new ad on say the tv series the netflix one or a buy you in movies or something coming up or educational app coming up or product or a car ad also depends on the choice the student makes then you also teach them the medium that the ads are from so the i ordinarily the ads were in three medium audio video and print and today you can add digital which is a great space you know google's entire earning is from adsense so they put ads there and people pay revenue or money when you click those ads so those are the mediums you can talk about ads and then what makes an ad memorable is it the jingle so there is a small slogan that comes i always remember you know maybe the maybe the slogan or a nike says just do it right or i'm loving it a finger licking good kfc perhaps it's the music behind it or the people there's a famous actor or a sports person doing an ad the product the product itself is fantastic or the place so it could be london paris mumbai and the ad or a fifa ground or a, a special place and then the ad is on a home maybe a school so what makes an ad goes on like that so look at the ad that is given on h1 and it's the ad for mobile phone a very very popular ad today especially oneplus the very slogan of oneplus is says never settle oneplus ads also are very popular because the founder of oneplus would actually take an iphone and break it up and say this is what i don't want in a phone or what i'm missing in a phone number 2 they have taken up a great hero so today one of the most popular hero is the iron man from the avengers tony stark and tony stark is what i call the brand ambassador of oneplus then the features of oneplus so the price range is high yet people want it because people think the ad is giving a great value for money the colors perhaps of the mobile phone the second ad is not so popular but still has a great what you call the mascot so duracell has a bunny and the bunny keeps running on and on and on can you think of some more mascots perhaps mascots are more popular with sports especially olympic every olympic game have a mascot for example i remember russia had a mascot called misha so why did you go online and find out what are the mascots available with a particular olympic game H2 speaks about a specific ad again on Huggies 
and do you realize the ads that the father is picking up a child very rarity and he says huggy is so easy even a father can do it so you show the page to the students and tell them what does the ad, ad convey it conveys ease it conveys parents involvement it also conveys a social message that men and fathers have to be more involved as much as mothers can then finally there is a activity or a challenge for the students that why don't they make an ad for a pen that keeps on or goes on writing i'm sure there are similar ads available the pens are also available so you can do two things one you can divide the class into three groups and you can say okay i'll go to the traditional one audio video and and print so the group which is on print they have to make an ad so it will come in a newspaper and it's seen then you can make an audio ad so the theme that makes it just make sound so they are, they are not to be seen but they make a like a nice commercial it comes on a fm radio and then there is a the group of students who make a video ad they actually going to enact it and they come on a tv or a or a or a facebook and they have to show it as a role play then you divide the class in the same groups and say which ad has more potential and which is more effective in today's age a print ad perhaps is seen only for a short while you leave the newspaper and it's gone a uh, audio ad is more visible it still resonates in your ears but maybe the visual ad which has both an audio and some graphics and some heroes it's more visible doesn't necessarily always true some print ads are more popular it's also the creativity the humor the sarcasm the way you put an ad across so this is a great lesson into what today's world is like for a student while our main topic is optimism we go to h4 and h5 which is taking a domain of sports and what are we doing in optimism is we giving an example a case study of a tennis pair rahil and his friend sandhya they are playing a mixed double so mixed double is where two genders play from the brain siblings of australian open so you know the idea is there must be two uh, brother and sister from australia brain you know why don't you tell them what could the name be it could be jack brain and jill brain right but then what happened was they were the best players but yet they lost now because they lost what we go we immediately go to the second one h5 and we saying to rahil and sandhya what are 12 positive words can you do to cheer them up you know optimism is about never giving up so the words could be from the circle we has given you how many words do you find from the circle so in the circle you see there are six words given so you are asking them to come with six synonyms you teaching something very terrific what could be a synonym for terrific or oh, uh, i know the antonym it's terrible for terrific perhaps but what else can you do fantastic maybe all right so well done would be good good work you know it may all be all, all of these actually are synonyms but you can bring up something great write the words on the board encourage them to write the synonyms antonyms define them is a little fun we do with words but these are all optimistic words a very interesting study says the more positive looking words sounding words you use the better is your day the better is your attitude and better is your eq emotional quotient so you teach students not to use negative sounding words they are the words that are used in bullying they are the words people are used to irritate and embarrass others that's not what optimism or we do then along with the kind of optimism we have got we've come back to h4 in h4 you see with the picture itself find about india's best tennis players well one of the epic that comes to our mind is leander pace then there is mahesh bhupati but here they don't come get along so well what could have gone wrong then a very popular tennis player is sania mirza she has paired with some great people and won some fantastic mixed doubles and they are very good in a doubles player she has won women doubles so find out more about them find about little more whichever country you from you could be from singapore you could be from sri lanka you could be from you know mexico or united states of course you'll have your sport will be popular in some area and may not be popular you can pick something up but tennis is a very uh, international sport so what is the difference between tennis and badminton interesting isn't it both are played on the court but you see tennis is a faster game compared to the views of a tennis ball badminton is played with a shuttle cock right the bats are different the amount of force required is both are exhausting india has to great you know india has become great uh, player in badminton with women especially and men you know uh, uh, the way there is this uh, shrikant there is pv sindhu there is sanya nehwal so people are doing great in this style 
which is more fun which one have you played i think badminton is more easy because the requirements are very simpler you can still play in your house lawn itself but tennis have a stronger requirement so now you're just challenging talking perhaps as a great teacher you might pull up a video of a tennis match and talk about it you might show a, you know photo of one of the greatest tennis legend roger federer or rafa nadal and then you can talk about these heroes and what goes on in the routine why they are special what goes on it could be cristiano ronaldo or virat kohli but the effort they put in the kind of you know they they say so no so uh, sweets so they are very health conscious they are they are very uh, they take care of themselves these are things that go on and optimism has a direct relationship with the food intake you take you take too much sugar you might be high but that is when you have depression so you know you have to control yourself in today's time teeth two things are very common so you take care of your teeth you take care of your health you take care of your uh you know body you exercise these are good exercises things you do to keep yourself healthy a sound mind is a sound body so much for a lecture but i hope you can have lot of things around optimism for them the final one is again on sport but a fantastic study on someone amazing in sports so h6 to h8 is a story of a of a maverick player from sri lanka his name was marwan ataputu he is retired now marwan ataputu was one of the greatest talent sri lanka found and they put him in the test match and his first six test match scores so in three test matches that he had was 0 0 0 1 0 0 you play six innings as a opener and this is your score what do you think happened next Did the Sri Lankan captain drop him? Was he taken as a captain? What would you do? So we're still on H six and say, give another chance, or someone else is waiting, or give someone else a chance. And this is amazing. You know, Harsha Bhogle, India's leading commentator and a sports expert in cricket, especially, says that Marwan Ataputu was just not getting through. And this is H seven. I would like you to read it. It's a great story of what happens. You know, it's written so well. The runs were just. you know drying out they were not coming in his technique was good his temperament was good but he was just not flowing but he got another opportunity and in the next opportunity marwan ataputu made 1600 16 centuries six double hundreds that's 1200 runs right there he went on to become the captain of his country and all this while it took him 6 years to score run number 2 so after the first six matches he was dropped he played hard for 3 years to come back in the in the team again and then there was no looking back have you had a marwan ataputu state when you go on stage what happens to you maybe you're trying to paint something maybe you flung that science paper maybe you just can't do the spellings right maybe 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 but if you give up you give up but if you keep trying harder opportunities will come to you I think this is such a lovely case study as a great teacher just take a cricket bat to your classroom as a prop and talk about Marwan Ataputu I'm sure you would love to do so much but if you want to still do little maths about it and I have some time with you on H8 we've got Marwan Ataputu statistics with you so look at the statistics do whatever you like to do with it in the test and ODIs how many runs have you scored so you know there's a very interesting thing the runs say in test are 5502 how do you calculate an average so basically you take the runs and divide it by the number of innings so 5502 divided by 156 but you minus the now not out so you divide it by 140 and around that time you will get your average of 39 interesting find it out what it means bf means balls face sr means strike rate so in in test match you play slow so every two balls you score one run but if you see wonder that the, the strike rate increases in today's time of t20 strike rates are very commonly around 170 180 andrew russell the west indian player have a 250 strike rate so this is interesting for you to find out why don't you give them a challenge of finding out someone else a common player how did he start what did they not do or maybe someone else from a different sport and ask every child what is that one fear play that plagues them you know it could be playing a you know it's just a sport or it could be as i said doing a, a subject and it will be interesting to know what the challenges are and how can they become optimistic remember in one of the first activities we played like become a king or a queen if you have not done and this is a long time ahead why don't you ask someone the challenge and ask your team members your students to give a suggestion 
One of the best ways to encourage a student is ask the community to help and everybody has so many opinions. The student starts feeling good about it. He might pick up one or two lessons and it would be the great way to learn a lot about that student and how we can grow. So on that note, be optimistic. Always find the glass always half full, not half empty. And this is one last recommendation on optimism. Take two glasses of water. One, both are half, but which one do you see? Half full or half empty? And you'll find half of the class. Is it optimist or pessimist? Hello and welcome to Candle Yellow. And today I come to my favorite topic, the public speaking. So the letter is I and our first activity revolves around I1 and I2. Well, in this section of public speaking, we will teach our students what is imagination and the power of creativity in speech. You know, words can conjure up images. Words are what script writers are sought after. The better your dialogues, the better the words, you can actually create an image with just these words. One great way of coming up with answers is asking a good question. So a good speech engages the audience, maybe by asking a question on how did you come to this place? You know, there is a very popular statement where somebody asks, how do I go to the Lincoln or the Carnegie Hall? And Carnegie Hall is of course the name of an auditorium, but the answer that came from a popular speaker was by practice, practice and practice. You know, if you feel this joke can be understood, you can share. But the idea is a question that can be sarcastic, a question that can be plain rhetoric. Rhetoric means a simple question. Did you have breakfast? And everybody says yes. Now, imagine if you have to struggle for breakfast. So you can start talking about a goal which is on poverty or zero hunger. So the idea is what kind of questions can you and your class frame on the topic which is given to you, childhood. Because... A good speech, and I've seen a lot of speakers, I've heard them, they use a lot of experience from childhood and from school. Why? Because these are something everyone can relate to. So I have made three questions which you can ask your students. Is How many of you cried on the first day of school? Interesting, isn't it? Suddenly it makes you smile if you're an adult. It makes you think, it makes you nostalgic, it makes you go back. So ask your students and engage in a dialogue. Number two, how many of you remember your first teacher? So let them, they might say no, but perhaps if you encourage them, all right, who is the first teacher that comes to your mind? Let them tell a little about the teacher, who they think, was she old, was, uh, was she you know, new to the school, how friendly was she, you know, what subject she taught. And I say she primarily because most of the early primary teachers are females. It could be a male as well, it would be great. Ask them, why do you think there are only females teaching at the nursery and the pre-primary schools? Then the third question is, what's the best gift you received? When was it? Was it on a birthday or on a festival? Who gave it? Father, mother, uncle, aunt? You know, do they remember the cycle? Perhaps in today's time it could be a, a sneaker. I don't think there could be a web gadget also. Who knows? But a PSP, perhaps a book. I think they're amazing. So, Questions that engage are a great part of the speeches and I would like you to engage your students with these questions. I too, we are talking about some new topics where the students have to ask questions on these. Now specifically, it's, it's a question on school uniform. So now we are talking about, uh, do you like your school uniform? What was your first school uniform like? What if schools had no uniform? You know, which is, which is the color you would love to wear in a uniform? How would school be if your uniform was about denim jeans could you have round neck collars as a part of your school uniform you know suddenly you are talking about questions and people are answering so if you have a topic one of the best ways to engage an audience in the beginning or in the middle when little boring uh, talks happen a question can invigorate or uh, activate an audience the second thing that we can talk about is you can talk about the internet and a very popular question on the internet could be okay how many of you use internet every single day who do you think uses more on internet and when most likely internet always goes on to mobile because you use data so what are the apps that are very popular with the students you can ask a question on that what if we had no internet in the world so suddenly you are looking at a lot of questions and the ability to make questions the third one is something that I connect a lot with nature and animals. Polar bear. 
perhaps a great thing as a teacher you might show a video or a photograph of a polar bear which is also in the book recent one when a polar bear strayed away from its own zone and went was eating food in the garbage bin so it's a sad world global climate warming or global warming is affecting the most immediate effects you can see on the ices and global uh, you know the antarctica the glaciers and it's the polar bear so you can ask about it what do you think is the fur of the polar bear like you, the question can be around it or you can speak about how do you think would a, a polar bear fighting a grizzly bear who would win you know, it could be a lot of questions some fun some interesting but the idea at the end of it is are you getting students excited about these questions and answers let's move on to activity number two i3 i4 and i5 all the three represent activity number two and we are looking at imagination and activity here it's again we are taking them to something to do that they might be very very you know uh, able relatable it's these scouts and the guides so we say have you ever given a morale boosting talk to the boy scouts on the evening campfire well what will you talk about so your topic is there's a group of young boys most likely your students might be the same age and you have to give a talk in that group you are one of the participants perhaps so how will you build a talk up maybe you can make one of them as a leader and say okay this is a group of boy scouts how will you talk about it so uh, campus on the hill the food was left over so the story that you're building up from polar bear to grizzly bear attacks where there was a food left in the camp and the bear attacked and how did the scouts save themselves what did they use did they have any kind of skills that was taught in the scouts and guides program perhaps using fire or a flashlight and they are just creating an imaginary story of a bear attack in the tent and you can make into small groups and one student can you know first write down the story the premise and then they can repeat the story to the whole class now it's not just the imagination by words you should also have some vocabulary and you should also know basic idea of how do you use it so what we have done as a side activity on i4 is look at a scouts and a guide uniform the batches represent what they have achieved in it and how many batches can you count so you see two different scouts and guides uh, you know uniforms and each batch could be of different names and different colors the idea is if you were winning it how would you win how, you know which one have you won have they won any batches what do you think a group batch may mean what do you think a leadership stripe may mean you know what are the challenge awards create questions around it a great game to play on i4 is can they actually make up five questions around these batches you know so so this is what you do you create this and perhaps if they have to choose three top ones why don't they circle the three top one and write down one two three i would like to win a batch like that who knows you can start a batch competition in your classroom and say all right i'm going to give a discipline batch a smiling batch and a punctuality batch so every week you will give certain you know batches to students who are great on discipline who are always punctual and people who are very friendly and smiley i would love a batch on that aspect as well then the last one and this is an extended activity with third page where we've created a certain batches they have to guess what the batches could mean as i said imagination has to be developed in a child and we are of course looking at creative thinking here but they are almost you know uh, we are looking at 10 batches right there in in simple hexagonal form and it, it is there is no right and wrong answer again this could be a group activity where students are allowed to take the books and they should write it down so please make sure the students write in the book what these batches could mean and encourage every answer of course you can appreciate one little oh this is great this is too good but tell them think of great answers think of what it could be mean for example the one with a lot of hands so this batch could be someone who is very helpful or it could be a team player or it could be someone who is great at leadership there is one with a with you know with a raft and a boat and a flag it could be champion swimmer who know or, or someone who can build something up each batch can be different and the students creativity should come out when they speak about it so this is for scouts and guides uh, on a, on a par parallel note you can do one more thing you can actually ask them if they participate in a scouts and guide you can invite a scouts and guide in the uniform and talk to the students a great school initiative can that be or you can actually have someone wear a scout and a guide uniform if if you can take it beyond it need not always be scouts and guide it could also be talking about the 
the the defense forces so army navy and admiral if anyone has a brigadier in their relatives they can come and talk to the kids brilliant experience surreal experience a guest visit like that would be amazing so this is all on public speaking as we're talking about the last of the third of activity on public speaking with imagination and creativity i6 is again a scenario where we're leaving them with a question so we're saying if you are alone on an island and there's only one book you can have with you what book would you like to have it's an interesting question we have also you know asked at different levels this question this is a question you always ask uh, students uh, and people in interview in big organizations like google have a question like that would you take a religious book a bible or a quran or a gita but then the idea is if you take a religious book it is not about spirituality it's about you giving up or you making sure that you want a book so that you can find a way out perhaps hunting on the island learning how to surf making coconut shake how to make a boat wouldn't that be good you're creating scenarios that see your spirituality should not be about giving up the same i6 can also be played in a different way we say all right i respect the books of religion and we will tolerate uh, that part so imagine you remove book number one so now the rest of the books why don't you make a number from one two three four five six and seven in seven you can say that in in seven we can say that which one would you like to order in the right place so it will also be a choice every student have i know it's a debatable issue i would like to have learn to fish first and then i would like to communicate with the cannibals but the idea is the whole concept that we are trying to say is it is all about creating scenario now now that we have said alone in an island why don't we play another very interesting activity which is not part of public speaking but something which is so sort of critical thinking is if you are only allowed to have five things with you on an island what are the things you will have and i'll give an idea if they can't think of it you can think of you know don't think of mobile phone because you're not getting any signal there so you know you can think of a swiss knife uh, you can think of fishing net you can think of uh, you know a tent with you so these are things we are asking them to survive perhaps you can think of a matchstick which is very relevant so they can create fire out of it you can think of a, a, a you know to create fire for a signal to help uh, the students might come and say i will take a, a aeroplane you know allow these kind of funny answers also but these are great in terms of speaking and they didn't realize it that they are already publicly speaking as they give answers they are getting confidence to start challenging the notion giving answers alone on an island has many many scenarios perhaps one way is why don't they make a small synopsis of anybody who was alone on an island and i can only think of one of the best movies that you know tom hanks had made called castaway so you can show them what castaway is you can bring pictures you can show a movie if there are some better movies you can think of others uh, you know you can always email us some new movies that come up with castaway is a person living on an island for almost like two decades 20 years if i remember correctly how could he have survived can we summarize the movie for the class up another popular movie not on the island is life of pi you know you uh, richard parker is the name of the tiger very popular it was alone on a boat and of course they they had an island for a very short time filled with mere cats so why if they've seen the movie life of pi why don't they summarize the movie in say 10 sentences or in under 2 minutes it will be great for the students to come up with scenarios while they enjoying it they also giving answers to you and me the last of the activity i7 in creativity is you see the more you read the better you become at creativity creativity is also for logical numbers so we just give a small puzzle where we've given you some you know some some shapes so square the stars and the triangle and only indicative numbers are given can they decode it and how did they add up to these numbers so once you get the answer of the question you will find out each of the box have a specific number to it let them go out find out some numbers you can give some more forms you can do sudoku with them you can create more puzzles whatever you choose the idea is the more you rattle up your neurons in the brain the better a public speaker you can become so all the best and hopefully you enjoy your stage